perceiving affordances differently, the unintended consequences when young autistic adults engage with social media. With many benefits of social media found in the literature, this includes social capital, psychological well-being, social emotional support, and improved performance in the workplace. There have also been some drawbacks. This includes context collapse and information overload, and there have been some studies identifying depression and insecurity. However, it's unclear who's affected by this. What about those on the autism spectrum? Autism is a form of neurodiversity uh, where there are communication, social, and behavioral differences. And there have been differences found in use of technologies and how they are affected by it. For example, in video call, higher levels of stress and cognitive load have been found. We decided it was important to understand the experience of using social media for those on the spectrum. Prior research has been mostly survey-based and the correlations have been inconclusive. There have been positive benefits, social well-being, friendship quality, but also negative ones, social, emotional issues and low life satisfaction. And there's been very little research on young adults in particular. So our research was an ethnographic study where we conducted interviews, observations, and um, observed many workshops and engaged in workshops. We wanted to understand the values and not just focus on social media. The field sites we had were alpha and beta, and they offered day services such as job training and life skills. And those at alpha were, um, had IQ over 70 and those at beta under 70. We conducted semi-structured interviews with the young adults as well as parents and allies. Now we take an affordance perspective where an affordance is some behavior or functionality um, that's enabled by an item or technology in this case. So for social media, four of the main affordances are sharing user-generated content, consuming user-generated content, connecting with others, and interacting. So instead of just a one-way interaction, being able to like or comment. Now it's important to note that affordances can differ. So the perception for how something can be used might differ depending on the individual and situation. A toddler looking at a chair may think that it is the perfect object to pull themselves up to a standing position. Whereas an adult who's much taller may see the flat surface at a level that is perfect for sitting down. Now, our research questions wanted to focus on how young adults use the primary affordances of social media, and we will talk about just our Q1 for today. One of the underlying uh, causes of seeing affordances differently was literal interpretation. Uh, we saw how those on the spectrum uh, shared their content in different ways. So one example here is disclosing information. So we discovered with one individual that they had a lot of publicly shared information about phone numbers, email, et cetera. And when we asked her about it, she said, well, when I made my account, it said phone number, email. So I filled it in. And uh, we saw this a lot, especially when um, folks talked about how there might be something that was inappropriate posted. So this example, the staff member said that they had a client who went on Facebook and wrote, I hate my job. I hate this person. Um, their boss was a friend of theirs on Facebook and saw this. And so these types of prompts that say what's on your mind or encourage people to write a comment uh, when taken literally can actually be harmful. Now, another example of how this affected affordances was how looking at content uh, a lot of our participants took it at face value. And so someone's profile with a really pic pretty picture and an attractive individual with uh, saying they wanted to be their friend, a lot of times they accepted that at face value. Um, another way this manifest was with connecting with others. And so the friend label was very problematic. This happened, um, this was problematic in many ways. One, which is when someone approached them and sent a friend request, they would think of it as not, should I accept this person? Would they really be a good friend? But, oh, they want to be my friend. So I will now accept it. And now we are friends and this person will behave like a friend would behave. Um, now, 
that's not always the case. And with bad actors, uh, that did lead to some of the most egregious harms that we saw. Now, this also happened, though, when it was for example, a friend of their sister, and they would friend that person and assume a much deeper relationship with them than perhaps their sister even had with that person. And so interpreting the label of friend uh, did also lead to a lot lot of issues. And finally, um, this manifests with network interactions. So expectations about how you interact with someone or when someone will respond ended up being problematic. Here's an, a very common example, which is these icons that are check marks. A lot of participants interpreted that as, oh, the person has read it and they will now respond to me. Now, in reality, that is actually a message sent icon. And so you would have a lot of these instances where someone had sent 50 text messages in 10 minutes. And because they weren't sure why the person wasn't responding. They had seen it. Why are they not responding back? Were they mad? And then the anxiety would build. And so this ended up causing, you know, um, uh, misunderstandings and harming relationships. So what are our recommendations for designing for neurodiversity? Well, for inclusive design, we need to be more direct and remove ambiguity. That friend label, instead of having someone try to interpret and decide if it should be a friend, it should be more straightforward, you know, represent what that relationship really is or is not. Um, the second piece of advice we have is to provide some social guidance. So understanding you know, what the norms are, and this goes both ways. For neurotypical individuals, understanding the communication norms for someone on the spectrum, as well as vice versa understanding how to communicate with one another and coming to a common ground is really important to avoid some of those misunderstandings. And finally, designing with safety in mind. Um, You know, this can be tricky because independence and um, making sure that uh, I'm self-directed is a huge goal for any user. And so making sure solutions are not overbearing, but perhaps just prompting and helping individuals understand, oh, you know what? Now I remember this is actually not a friend, but this is something else. Uh, Solutions like that could be helpful. Thank you so much and contact us with any questions.